Volcanoes and Volcanic Landforms Here are our learning goals for today. Compare and contrast shield, composite volcanoes, and cinder cones. Describe how calderas and lava plateaus form. The shape and structure of a volcano is going to be determined by the type of materials that erupt from it. And there are three basic types of volcanic landforms. There are shield volcanoes, composite volcanoes, and cinder cones. And we're going to talk about each one. Shield volcanoes are almost always made from mafic lavas. And the reason is that mafic lavas are low in silica and their viscosity is very low so they're very runny and when they erupt from the volcano they can travel a long distance as a lava flow before they harden so the volcano tends to be broad with gently sloping sides you can see in this picture when the lava comes out it can run a long way before it hardens so you get this kind of low broad volcano and an example of that would be Mauna Loa in Hawaii. Here's a picture of Mauna Loa. It's so big, you can't get the whole thing in a picture. It extends way out this way and way out that way because the lava that comes out from the vent up here is so thin and runny, it can travel a very long distance before it hardens. Another type of volcano we need to talk about are composite volcanoes. These are generally made from intermediate lavas. So this, this would be a lava that's halfway felsic, halfway mafic is the way I like to look at it. It would be intermediate in its amount of silica and intermediate in its viscosity of lava. So sometimes you might get lava flows. Sometimes you might get an explosive eruption where you get cinders and pyroclastic materials that come out of the volcano. This material would accumulate close to the vent where the material exits the volcano. It wouldn't travel a long distance so it makes a steeper pile is the best way to think about it in, when compared to a shield volcano. So this would be made up of layer after layer of materials that have been erupted from the volcano but couldn't travel very far. So they build a relatively steep-sided volcano. An example of that would be Mount Fuji. And here's a picture of Mount Fuji. You can see that its height compared to its width is much different than Mauna Loa, the example of a shield volcano that we looked at. And the third type of volcanic landform that we're going to talk about are called cinder cones. Cinder cones form when lava doesn't run out and then run over the surface of the, the land, but instead the lava is thrown up into the air and it hardens very quickly when it's thrown up into the air and it falls back down as uh, small rocks we call cinders. Right? They're the smallest volcanoes. They often occur in groups. And an example would be Sunset Crater in Arizona. Now here's a picture of a cinder cone volcano erupting and you can see the lava is being thrown high into the air. You can even see where it's hardening into rocks right before the eyes of the person who took this picture. And then these rocks fall down and here are some that have landed. They're still hot so they're glowing red. But you can imagine this lava being thrown in the air hardening in the air and then rocks falling out of the air and accumulating around the vent here. Here are some cinders. Think of it as kind of like lava raindrops basically. Here's a famous example of a cinder cone here in the United States. This is Sunset Crater in Arizona. Another thing that we need to talk about are calderas. Calderas are altogether different. When we talk about shield volcanoes, composite volcanoes, and cinder cones, we're thinking of basically a type of volcanic mountain. But a caldera is a depression. And what happens is you get a volcano. This is a composite volcano. And there's a large magma chamber underneath here. This is filled with 
liquid rock inside the earth so it's magma and this volcano has actually been broken by faults and fissures and as this magma chamber fills it creates a tremendous amount of pressure plus there would be a lot of gas in this magma and eventually there's going to be an eruption and when when the eruption occurs it causes these cracks to totally break up the volcano and you can see in this picture now this volcano is totally shattered there'll be an explosive eruption and a lot of this material is going to go way high up in the air uh, but the rest of the volcano that's been shattered is going to fall back down into the magma chamber and it's going to create this circular depression we call a caldera and in the case of Crater Lake it's going to fill with water over a few thousand years and it's going to make this beautiful lake this used to be a tall volcano here there was a huge magma chamber underneath this volcano as the magma chamber filled it shattered the volcano over the top of the magma chamber when it finally did erupt it blew a lot of this upper part of the volcano away and the rest just fell down into the magma chamber and created this circular depression and then it took a few thousand years but that depression filled with this rainwater and it's very pure it's very clear another consequence of volcanic activity are lava plateaus sometimes continental plates will crack and when they crack uh, magma can escape from that crack instead of forming a volcano if it's really runny lava like basaltic lava it can pour out and run great distances before it solidifies and it creates a plateau now this has happened in the United States millions of years ago there were a series of cracks out here in the western United States that allowed basaltic lava to pour forth and it covered parts of Idaho Oregon and a huge part of Washington and here's a picture of a highway cut in Washington and this whole cliff is basalt that at one time was part of that lava flow that we just looked at. The same thing happened to India in a place called the Deccan Traps. There were cracks in the continental crust that allowed basaltic lava to pour forth and travel and cover huge areas. This is a picture of the Deccan Traps today. Now this area at one time was a flat plain but erosion has carved it now into these sharp mountains but you can see each one of these layers is a different lava flow this went on for millions of years the same thing happened in Siberia in a place called the Siberian traps and there was so much carbon dioxide released by these two events that it changed the climate of the earth 